What's good, y'all? It's your sister Erica Bain back again with another BMF video. In this video, I am breaking down episode five, Secret and Lies. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, y'all, this is by far my favorite episode of the entire series. Like, I think that they did an, an amazing job from start to finish in this episode. It was action-packed. It was detailed. It was nuanced. The performances were utterly amazing. Like, episode five gave me everything that I needed. I've already been on board with this series i did speak about you know episodes one and two moving a little bit too fast for me we were getting too much information all at once and weren't able to orient ourselves however we are oriented in the story now we know exactly why things are happening the way they're happening but then they're still coming out the woodwork with surprises and twists and turns that are very much so keeping us engaged as an audience and i love it the actor who is playing lamar bruh bruh and i just found out this week that he's british eric kofi abrifa lamar <laughs> I'm going to give you your flowers. You crazy. I would never want to run into you in the real world. Like, I would just never want to interact with Lamar. But you're giving what, what needed to be gave all up and through the series. And this was definitely his episode to shine. He's been shining all series, but this has been his episode to shine for sure. But let me go ahead and jump on into it, y'all. Everybody lies. This is the first words of the episode as we see a callback to a... Um, to the past where we get little bouts of like Lucille telling Terry to lie to his teacher about why he wasn't in school. We get Nicole lying about doing her homework to Charles and we see Charles lying to Lucille about looking good in a dress that he actually don't think that she looks good in. And this is the theme of the episode in reference to like everybody lies, whether it's a big lie, a little white lie, a lie just not to hurt somebody's feelings or a lie to manipulate and get something that you want. Everybody lies and you learn to do it at a very young age. However, these lies both the lies that we tell others as well as the lies that we tell ourselves can have monumental consequences and we literally see this play out in this episode from there we go into the deposition for terry's eye and the suit against the hospital for malpractice and they call upon evidence of terry and me driving a mercedes-benz wearing fur coats and rolex watches with no clear means of how they obtain these assets they go as far as to even point out that they know that they are selling crack and they will examine if he engaged in violent activity after the hospital which could have worsened his eye condition and not the doctors who actually botched the surgery yeah so now they got the, the hospital on their heads the hospital is sending private investigators to take pictures of them to follow them around and they gonna need to settle this kind of soon because as they transition into this new working arrangement with big l who's going to be their new supplier they do not need private investigators and police and whoever sniffing around clocking at every move like i definitely understand that terry wants them to pay because it does feel like the the they botched the surgery you saw that from you know when we were back in that hospital i think this was episodes two and three and how they were responding to certain things his eye didn't get worse because he tried to leave the hospital his eye was already worse than when he left that third surgery and y'all did something wrong now one thing i was thinking about y'all is like one thing i do think that terry need to be grateful for is that he's still alive because yo you were shot in the face bro you were shot at the top of the bridge of your nose between your eye and your nose how you didn't die i don't know but they kept you alive and yes your eyes messed up now the the biggest part from this is like after his first surgery his eyesight was fine or everything was fine i think it's with the second and third one that something actually happened and went wrong so i get it there should be some type of malpractice going on here but he might have to wind up picking the lesser of two evils because continuing to go to trial and to pursue this could call into question all of his dealings all of what's going on and uh, after seeing the little bit that we saw in this episode it's not going to be pretty once all of their you know skeletons and uh uh, little lies because Terry has definitely been lying about not being involved with me not being involved with the drug game once all of those are called out we don't know what the fallout is going to be now also at the start of the episode we see that Meech pays Pat a visit and, and on some very very humble humble shit he tries to break ties now Meech actually calls out Pat for using as one of the calls to like why they need to go their separate ways and this is when their convo takes a turn for the worse and y'all know I love Wood Harris and if you don't know now you know I love Wood Harris when he said I will wax your little ass child it sent me this scene just totally sent me I definitely think that Meech came hat in hand really trying to keep it cool not necessarily wanting to turn Pat into an enemy but that was gonna happen regardless Pat has been surviving with Meech and Terry 
honestly. Like, riding on their back and their hustle and their grind, being their supplier, has really kept him afloat. And now that Meech is walking away, that's going to put a dampen on all of his business. Like, he has no other high earners. He has nobody else that's bringing in nearly as much as they were bringing in. So this is going to be a problem. Now, Meech don't know this because Meech still was looking at Pat like he was still this top dog that he was when he pulled him into the game initially. But we knew that from Rock, you know, being very candid about it and actually seeing and the Meech has seen him actually use that Pat ain't who he used to be and we also see this start to play out because Pat ain't gonna take this line down like towards the end of the episode he also calls Detective Bryant down and is basically trying to get Detective Bryant on his payroll and get him to turn on Meech like yo I got some information I want to take this dude down like Pat is not going to just walk away and let Meech and Terry be able to go frolic and be free and continue to get this money if he gonna lose money if he about to lose his business they gonna lose their business too and he is definitely going to be a problem now while I'm bringing that up let me go ahead and talk about that too because when pat calls detective brian down to partner with him on taking me down it's the whole scene set up for me like that scene was one of my favorites from the entire episode because i love with harris and then also seeing him and his brother steve harris in a scene together was just truly brilliant detective brian says you're a dinosaur pat and i'm the nigga that's going to make you extinct and i was just like oh MG. Everything from the dialogue to the shots to the framing to the color and the vibe of the scene was just so right. These two brothers, talented, talented. Okay. I'm gonna stop gushing and move on. Now, while Meech is taking care of business at the top of the episode, Lamar is over there playing Father Snow's best. And I ain't gonna hold y'all. Lamar and Mo look good, feel good. They just work. Yes, he is still crazy as hell, but they work. And I actually like seeing their little family. It kind of sucks at the start of this episode with them and their little family and how they're getting along very, very well. It's ultimately a lie to the audience because the rest of the episode is spent with Lamar spiraling behind Meech actually taking Zoe in an attempt to get Lamar to give them back their product. He goes from rounding up the crew to try to figure out and get them to scour the streets to figure out where Terry and Meech or any of their family actually lives to strangling one of his uh, soldiers because yeah he shouldn't be worried about business when his daughter is missing to running up on Kato and Kato's house assuming that Zoe was actually there which she was and Meech just happened to get her out right in time. We literally got to see the a full like emotional roller coaster with Lamar in this episode all the way down to when Slick returns her to Lamar and then Lamar takes her home to Mo and we can see like how defeated and uh distraught he is after Mo shuts the door on him and tells him that both basically him and Meech are done to her don't come to her house no more like she said y'all lie more than y'all breathe you know black woman is mad when she say something like that like <laughs> that's it that's all and we went from at the top of the episode Lamar having everything that he actually wanted and just in a really great space and trying to be the best that he could possibly be to feeling completely rejected and displaced from his family not able to interact with his daughter and ready to rage hell down on who is responsible i.e. Meech or these funnery boys now another little quick note I want to make y'all when we were at the at the school when he was waiting to go get Zoe because you know Meech had already picked her up and then we you know had the little 50 boy give him the message or whatever before he pulls off his license plate says 666 y'all and i only caught this on my second watch of the episode his license plate says 666 i was on twitter and somebody was like lamar gotta die and the actor who plays him is utterly amazing but lamar got to go lamar is going to be a problem we have three episodes left in this season lamar is about to be a major major problem and we thought he was bad already now it's over it's done they're gonna have to put him down now another thing i want to note really quickly about lamar and i actually was talking about this on twitter the conversation is actually still going on because i was live tweeting as i was watching it if you're not following your girl already follow me at ericavane.com on all your favorite social media sites but specifically on twitter when the show's premiere because i try to get on there and live tweet and and tweet my thoughts but I sent out a tweet which said so Lamar couldn't have been the one that shot Terry because he has no clue where to look for him or Meech and that person that shot T did it outside of Wanda's house and I've gotten so many likes and retweets and responses behind that because a lot of people were like oh snap we didn't even think about it like that but like y'all they literally could not find Meech and Terry this whole time so now the question is who shot Terry because I literally thought it was Lamar like I have known it was 
was Lamar this whole time and like now I'm like it couldn't have been Lamar because he would have known exactly where to go to snatch up Wanda and that baby in retaliation for Zoe. Y'all let me know in the comment section down below who do you think shot Terry? If you go to my Twitter you'll see that I'm retweeting everyone's responses and there are people who are telling me be Mickey. There's people who are telling me Kato. Y'all let me know in the comment section down below or go ahead and send me a tweet after you give me a follow. Now back to the episode breakdown. Kato. I think I'm going to make a video specifically about Kato because I don't want sis to die but she might be one of the people who got to go to because this plan both sides it ain't even really working for sis and it's she's kind of giving me endearing because even when when Lamar was at the house she could have literally been like Meech and uh Zoe right there they were literally walking behind them and you could see them out the window as Lamar was talking to her but she was trying to deflect she was trying to distract and she was trying to give Meech enough time to get away which leads me to believe that she's actually on the 50 boys side but she's just doing what she can to keep Lamar off her ass but the only thing that I think that she's going to be able to do to do that is to actually come clean with Meech and Terry and trust them not to kill her and then she needs to help them get rid of Lamar but again I'm gonna make a separate video to talk about Kato as a character because I think that she is very very interesting and she has surprised me for sure in how her story has evolved y'all let me know what y'all thoughts are about Kato in the comment section down below right now let me know if y'all think she should die if you think she should live and whose side do you think she's actually on also happening throughout this episode is the progression of the case for J-Mo and the detectives meet with one of the witnesses that they find from the neighborhood that saw J-Mo get put into the car and I didn't even catch this until my second watch like I think I was just looking at it and like oh this is kind of weird why is he standing like that why is he being like that detective bryant literally is standing behind the witness while they're asking him questions he doesn't id meech or terry as one of the people who picked up jmo and then when he goes to let the witness leaves he faces the double-sided glass versus actually facing the witness and then when the witness goes out and then turns back to look at him then you get the moment of like oh we think he recognizes him but he doesn't say anything we get a call back to the witness later on in the episode when they go to talk to him again because he called and said oh I think I remember something else which we're led to believe he thinks that he remembers seeing detective Bryant this dude the witness remembered the car he remembered the side he remembered so many things he was definitely going to have detective Bryant dead to rights however detective Bryant had already communicated with Meech and Meech got the dude to leave town now he communicates that Meech tells him that and detective Bryant's like okay cool that's settled now we are done he gives him his money back but it's a little bit too late because his partner is following him as well and sees him hand back off off the envelope so the moment when detective brian thinks that he's free he's gotten away with all the bs he's done and he's cutting ties with meech it's actually going to wind up being a moment where he's going to have to circle back to him because his partner got whiff of what's going on he's going to be able to put two and two together the same way that he put two and two together about there being a missing earring out of jmo's ear that detective brian went to go find in his own car he's going to put those things together and whether detective brian wants to or not he is going to need me to help him not get outed by his partner and they might have to wind up killing the partner because he's definitely given the man who will not stop until this case is solved and he can't take a hint okay now before the episode ends terry is having a moment where he is starting to reconsider everything and then verbally starts to recount all of the bullshit that they have gone through in the most concise way so much so that his mother who was just getting a little glass of water she was a little thirsty was able to be brought up to speed on all of their criminal activities and shenanigans in a moment and is completely shocked and disturbed their veil their lie their passing of oh yeah it was only Meech and he's taking the brunt of this is instantly eradicated because she literally walks in hearing them talk about people dying and it being their fault and then seeing multiple keys of coke on the bed bruh it's the still bringing the keys of coke back to your mama house for me <laughs> anyway y'all i really really enjoyed this episode if i missed anything that you want to talk about drop it down in the comment section down below and we'll keep the conversation going it's your good sis erica vain and this has been my episode five bmf breakdown i hope that y'all are enjoying them if you missed any of my previous breakdowns i'll have them linked for you on screen right here if you're new here hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my black mafia family coverage and i'm also bringing down all of the other hottest television series so you can go ahead and hit subscribe and, and turn that bell notification on so that you can be a part of the tribe and don't miss any of this hotness yeah i said it i'm gonna see you in the next one bye